Hi, um, how y'all doing? I'm uh, Coach Brandon McCray uh, from Gavi High School in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, this is my second year as head coach. I hadn't started my second year. Um, had my first year as a head coach. I was a long time offensive line coach uh, under Yusef Shakira at uh, Lincoln High School and then under Coach Corey Fuller at Gavi High School and um, ended up being blessed with the opportunity to become the head coach at Gavi High School. Um, you know, I, I think uh, like a lot of coaches uh, throughout the country, um, you know, this was my uh, first opportunity to be a head coach. And, um, you know, the big thing was, you know, just kind of jumping in and uh, having your ideas and having your philosophies that you might have learned from other people um, and then trying them out. You know, that, that's the big thing. Um, you just, you know, you get the opportunity, you want to be prepared, you think you're prepared. Sometimes, sometimes you think you are. Uh, the truth of the matter is you're never really prepared for everything. Uh, but being organized, I found, um, can definitely help you um, with, you know, just trying to, um, you know, navigate everything as it comes along. You kind of got to play it by ear. And, and I like to tell people, this was probably year zero for me. Um, you know, next year be year one. Because year zero is kind of, you know, that, that's that, uh, that, that first trial. And um, you have a lot of errors and things like that. And just um, for any young coaches out there, probably the biggest thing I would say is just stick to your morals, uh, believe in yourself, uh, be humble enough to know that you know, you don't know everything. Uh, and if there's something that you don't know, uh, just understand, you know, there's always people to learn from and, and find guys that you trust and guys that you worked with before. And, you know, just keep those relationships. Don't, don't feel like, um, you know, because you're a head coach, you have to be in a box and you have to have the answer for everything or that, that makes you less of a coach. Um, so, you know, that's probably one of the biggest things uh, that, that I would tell uh, any potential coaches uh, that, that are looking to lead a program. Um, today, just want to kind of talk about, um, you know, just our program vision. Um, so I'll talk briefly about that um, and what we do in our program. Um, just a quick, you know, side note, and, and I guess everybody starts off there uh, kind of talk with, with saying this. Um, everything that I got, I, I pretty much from somebody else, you know, football is all about, I think that's what's made me uh, a, a better coach. Um, you know, I've had success as assistant coach and uh, we, we had a decent season last year. Um, not where we wanted to be, but, you know, for a first year, it was a good year. But one thing I'll say is all of this comes from great coaches and great people that I've been around and not just in football, but um, people in business and people in education uh, that I've learned from. Um, I think that's the thing that's really helped me the most in my coaching career is uh, being a great listener, you know, not somebody that's listening to always have a response, um, but somebody that's listening to actually absorb what's being said and you know, not always even having something to say back, but just uh, absorbing what was said and, kind of thinking about how it relates to my situation and trying to um, find things that I can take back and help my kids be even better at uh, whatever we're trying to accomplish. But um, I'm going to show you guys um, our program philosophy. All right, so, um, and this is actually, you know, this is kind of an exclusive thing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, this is what I shared with um our administration when I went in for my interview, uh, actually to become a head coach. Um, and it was just kind of the, the God be football vision. Um, you know, my vision, um, for our program is for our players to, um, have the, the mind, body and spirit of a Cougar. Um, you know, although this is my, you know, I, it's my third year at Gabby, uh, I'm from the area. I know several great players, uh, Eric Terrell um, and, and uh, Chad Plummer and Travis Fisher and uh, Darius Bradwell and all the great players that have uh, came through Gabby. 
Um, and, and I think about those players, and I've heard so many stories be told about not just them on the field, but them as people. Um, and that kind of helped that lead me into what I want our players to be like from a mind, body, and spirit um, perspective. When I talk about the uh, the mind of a Cougar, it's more so talking about our classroom performance and, and, and gaining knowledge and, and what we're doing inside the schoolhouse. Um, you know, it, as far as the mind go, goes, uh, our academic success, some of the things that we have, and, and like it says here, uh, have to have a 2.0 to be eligible to play, uh, but you have to have a 2.3 uh, to be eligible to play at Gavi. Uh To be on the field for us, you have to have a 2.3. That, that's the standard as far as I know uh, for NCAA, and that's the minimum standard. Uh, although we push players to be, um, you know, way above that, uh, you know, we still, we strive towards having them ready for college opportunities. Um, so, you know, we want them to have that 2.3 GPA. Um, they must have a 2.5 to be available to the media uh, during the week. Or uh, let's say, you know, we have a guy that goes out and has, you know, 200 yards rushing or a guy goes out and uh, makes, you know, 20 tackles in a game and the media wants to interview them. Um, although we'll mention them uh, as coaches or, or we may make sure that they get that publicity because uh, they earn that. Um, they won't be allowed to be in front of any cameras or talk to any media that week. All right. So one of the other things um, outside of the 2.5 GPA for media availability, uh, they have to have a 3.0 to be considered a captain. So, you know, we'll have players within the program that, um, you know, may be great players, may, may be our best guys, or, um, you know, you may do a lot of great things, but um, the, the things that you do, on field for the program have to match what you're doing in the classroom. And so we, you know, it's a lofty pursuit. Um, I, I just feel like my philosophy is if you show me a kid that um, doesn't take care of their work in the classroom, uh, I can show you a kid that, that's probably not going to um, fully reach their potential uh, just because uh, time management is a big part of it. And, and if they plan on playing at the next level, um, you know, I, I want them to be prepared to try to be the best that they can be. So, you know, we, we kind of have that uh, rule in place. Um, our JV program, uh, we have players that have an F. Uh, they aren't qualified to play until they uh, raise that grade to a passing grade. So when their game day comes uh, and they turn in their grade check sheet, uh, they, they can't have any Fs on it. Um, they have it. Um, you know, that, that's kind of it for that week uh, as far as their playing time and the game goes. Uh, and we'll work with them on that. Um, some of the, so you, you can kind of see the standards that we have as far as the mind goes. Uh, and then some of our uh, program initiatives. Um, we have study hall um, twice a week in our program. Uh, we actually have a academic coordinator um lady by the name of Christina Hutchins um and, and Christina uh Miss Hutchins does a great job uh working with our players uh, as far as she's kind of that um uh, in between person my my goal uh as the head coach is, is never to um you know I don't go to teachers classrooms and uh try to ask them for grades or you know, try to tell them, hey, we need the stars, such and such to play, uh, but he needs this grade. Uh, that's never something that I'll do. Um, and to make sure that uh, that that's not the case, um, you know, Coach Hutchins, who's a certified teacher on campus, um, she actually deals with all of the academic performance stuff. So she'll go to teachers um, and, and talk to them about you know what can a student do to to improve their grade in the class or is there something that's coming up so usually like any big test or anything in their core subjects she'll know about before they even get to that week that they have to do it um also one of the cool things that we did this past year um this Hutchins will collect their work like let's say uh this past year we we only had three home games 
Um, you know, it was tough to schedule because of the success that we've had the past couple of years. Um, so we only had three home games. We played games in three different states last year. Uh, so we played over in Dothan, Alabama. We played uh, up in Georgia. Uh, we played in Orlando, I believe, twice, uh, which are pretty significant trips for us. But uh, we also played over in Jacksonville, and we were on the road uh, for two games in the playoffs that we won. Um, and so what she'll do is when we're going to miss any classes, she'll email each player's teachers and get any assignments that they could possibly miss that week. And so uh, we have what we call a mobile study hall. Um, and so she'll have their work packets. So they'll be in an envelope. And the players, when they get on the bus before we leave, um, turn in their cell phones. And once they complete their work, um, they can get their cell phones back. So we tell them, you know, if you're somebody that, you know, maybe you want to be on your phone, maybe you want to listen to music from it, or, you know, maybe you want to text your friends or something like that while we're on that long trip, um, or watch a movie or something, because, you know, they all want their phones. And so we tell them, hey, you know, this is the work that uh, your English teacher said that you need to do. Uh, once you finish that work, you can get your phone back. So it's kind of on them at that point. Um, you know, if, if they take the whole trip, uh, and they just won't have their phone the whole trip. Uh, you know, they most of them, I tell you right now, most of those guys, by the time we get about 30 to 45 minutes into the trip, uh, they've, they've got their work completed. They've uh, passed it back up to Miss Hutchins on the bus. Um, and, you know, they're, they're set to go. They got, their, uh, they got their work done, and now they can fully focus on football, and, and they got their phones back, which is probably the most important thing for them. So that's uh, one of the things that that academic coach part uh, is huge for us um, because we, um, you know, not every player is going to play college football. Not every player is going to play in the NFL, of course. Um, so we want to make sure that these players have options to be a productive member of society once they leave our program. We want them to be a, um, a, a better person, a, a better young man when they grow up um because they were a part of our program so that 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 initiative right there is very uh near and dear to me uh because i want these players to be able to uh get something out of being in our program other than just becoming a good football player and winning games all right moving down to the body so talked about uh academics um you know, next thing we'll kind of talk about is, um, you know, our players achieving their peak performance. You know, we, we want to develop players within our program. Um, you know, I know the big craze right now is is having personal trainers and all of this kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, especially teenagers, I remember when, when I was a teenager and playing high school football, me and my guys spent, you know, uh, an abnormal amount of time in the weight room. We, you know, we were always training or doing something for football. So that's what kids do that, you know, they, you know, just having one set hour, a few times for them to do something at school, just to be honest, they got too much energy, uh, to kind of sit around and not do anything. And sometimes they fill their time with the wrong things. So, a kid going out and, and getting extra help is definitely not against us. Um, our biggest thing is we want to make sure we're smart with that. Um, you know, we don't want to overexert a player. We, um, our strength coach, who is uh, Coach Michael Lewis, who does our strength program, he does a great job with it. His biggest thing when he talks to our parents uh, is talking to him about coordinating that uh, that training schedule. So if they're going to go to uh, and kind of train outside of our program. We want to make sure that we talk to those coaches and the parents, understand what they're doing within our program uh, so that it kind of matches up with what that personal trainer may be doing. So we are training the same thing on the same days and stuff like that, uh, especially if that 
uh, after he plays another sport. So like if he does track or plays baseball or basketball, we want to make sure we're doing what's best for, for that young man um, and not just saying, hey, this is what we got to do today. So, you know, focus on this and, um, you know, with, within reason. Um, so we, we have a year round strip program. So starting as soon as our season over, whenever that is, uh, we usually give them a little bit of time, usually around the uh, holiday time uh, to kind of get their fans about themselves and, and kind of get away for a while and rest their bodies. Um, and then when we come back in, in January, um, we'll, we'll actually start up our strength program. Um, you know, we do ours during the seven period, uh, which uh, we have six periods, which is a normal time then. There's some seven period electives, uh, which is when our football class is. Um, and so our kids will lift during that time. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, I have to get my strength coach on to kind of go into exactly what he does. But I'll tell you, he's a mad scientist. Um, you know, he does a lot with his big thing is working on flexibility. Um, and injury prevention. Um, you know, I, I came up as far as the weight room goes. You know, I'm a former offensive lineman. Um, I, I came up really in the mindset of um, what I like to call prison workouts. Um, just going in there and benching and squatting and doing as much weight as you can and, and challenging yourself as far as heavy weight. Um, he does that, Coach Lewis does that every now and then, you know, they'll, they'll put some big weight on there, uh, primarily with the squats and things like that. But um, he's all about injury prevention. He's all about players being able to move um, efficiently. You know, a guy, you know, he talks to me about, you know, a guy not being used to, not having their body used to a certain range of motion or a certain movement and then getting the game and now they have to uh, get their body to do a certain thing or their body makes a certain movement that they're not used to. And now you got, you know, uh, an ended, an, uh, I'm sorry, doing something that their body's not used to. And now you have an injury, um, whereas you probably could have helped prevent that or lessen the likelihood of that injury uh, had you showed that player how to properly stretch and uh, did some lifts that uh, strengthen certain muscles that they're going to need for football. That That's a big part of what he does. And, um, you know, uh, just to kind of add on to that, our coaching staff is in the weight room. So each kid, so each group that's going in the weight room, we usually have about four groups going. Um, and so each station is going to have at least one coach, and sometimes it's more based on time constraints. Uh, as far as my coaches go, but, um, you know, the kids are going to have coaches watching them do the technique. Coach Lewis goes through the strength program with our staff. So he presents to our staff what our kids are going to be doing and why they're doing it and some of the key points that they need to look for before our staff ever goes in the weight room with them. So maybe, you know, everybody's not a, um, you know, everybody's not an expert on, on weight training, but he'll give you just those key nuggets that you need to know to be in there and kind of make sure that they're doing stuff properly and, and encourage them while they're doing the lifts. Um, so when they get in there, you know, they got a coach watching them and monitoring them and pushing them. A big part of it too is we talk to our players about pushing each other. You know, we feel like when there's a good atmosphere, there's a certain atmosphere that we try to, um, have in the weight room so that, um, you know, when our players get on the field on Friday night, uh, they're used to talking to each other and used to communicating and things like that. The atmosphere that we create in the weight room, we feel like it's the number one thing that we need in the off season that we take over into the actual season and, and, and um, have success because of that. Um, so in addition to, you know, we have our spring workouts and stuff like that in, in, uh, in the winter, uh, and that leads into spring and spring football practice. 
Uh, we'll live, we live during our practice sessions. So like when we have spring practice, we still have lifts um, at least two days a week. So we'll go five days a week in the off season. Um, in the spring and in the fall seasons, we'll actually lift at least two times a week. Um, and then in the summertime, we're on that kind of winter schedule as well. So we'll do four days a week in the summer uh, just so they can have those Fridays. And usually how it, um, how it works out as far as the summer program, we'll have a three-week session, then we'll have that 4th of July week off, and then we'll have another three-week session. We'll have another week off uh, for them to kind of do what they need to do, get physicals, go on those last-minute family trips and things like that. Um, and then we'll start our kind of preseason camp leading into school and leading to the fall season. Um, so we kind of work our whole program around that. Um, uh, one of the key things I want to point out, um, I believe every player um, at a guy high school needs to be in the track program. And I told our skill guys, if you're going to touch the football for Garvey High School, uh, you need to be involved in our track program. Uh, this past year, I want to say we had 40 football players out for track, whether they were doing the running events or they were doing the uh, field events, those big guys. but And even our skilled guys that, you know, maybe weren't good enough or maybe younger guys um, that didn't run in the actual track meets, they still train with the track team and learn form running and things like that. We got a legendary track coach uh, who's uh, done some great things in the state of Florida as far as track is concerned. Um, and so, you know, he works with us. He actually uh, helps with our wide receivers too. So it's a good transition um, to have him, um, you know, mentoring the kids all during the season. Then they go into track and they kind of get a familiar voice somebody that's uh, still pushing them to uh, compete in the off season as far as track goes. Our defensive back coach, Coach Matt Jackson, he's also uh, involved with track and he does the jumpers and things like that. And so, you know, they're, they're used to having their coaches around them pretty much year round, but, you know, working on different sports. But the whole point of that is uh, keeping that, uh, keeping a competitive edge uh, year around. I think that's something that we do well in the program. Uh, all right. Uh, and then we get down to the uh, the spirit of a cool. Uh, well, you know, this is kind of talking about their heart and, and having love for the program and for the school uh, within themselves. I try not to be a coach that has a bunch of rules and, and things like that or telling guys what they can't do. Um, I like to more so focus on the opportunities that they have within the program, stuff that they can do. And um, I more so phrase it as expectations uh, or standards within the program, not so much, hey, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. I, I try not to be negative, um, you know, just to be honest, the, the, um, the demographic that we have in, in the neighborhood, you know, our, our neighborhood for Gabby High School uh, was uh, deemed the poorest zip code in the state of Florida. Um, so to be honest, our kids come from backgrounds and come from places where there isn't, you know, always a lot of hope. And sometimes, you know, there may be a lot of love, but there may be also a lot of negatives just within their environment. So when they get into our program, I like to focus on the positive. Now, you know, we, we have to, uh, you know, we have to discipline them. You know, kids are going to be kids. Um, and, and so I, I make sure I'm the guy that uh, does any discipline. I, I like to be the person that passes down those judgments and, and passes down those punishments. Um, I walk around to, classes during my planning period you know I, I go to kids classes and just pop up randomly to make sure they're doing some of the things that we like to have them do uh one being uh our players are advised to sit in the front of the class we ask every teacher 
to, to put our kids in the front of the classroom if possible. Some some can't do it, um, and that's just not their thing. But for the most part, they're accepting to that, um, and, and they let our guys sit in the front of the classroom and say, I'll go by and make sure those guys are in the front and uh, doing what they need to do. Um, as you can see here, this is kind of our standard um, is we want our kids to be, you know, a positive light in the community. We want our kids, um, our young men, to conduct themselves in a way that they can kind of, um, because they're usually the most popular guys on campus. They play other sports. People have known them forever. They're the ones that, you know, get interviewed by the news and stuff like that. And, and when we, I, I think any school that has a good uh, culture within their football program usually has a good culture throughout campus. Uh, Cause those are the guys with our guys being, you know, quote unquote, um, you know, the popular guys having them sit in the front of their classes and have them being held to the standard as far as not getting suspended from school. And, uh, you know, they do, if they're late to class, and our principal, he's big on, um, you know, kids not being late to class, which is a huge thing. But we kind of help them understand the rules of the school are going to apply to you. You don't have a different set of rules. You're going to be the example for everybody else. Hey, he can get to class on time. You know, they're, they're the cool guys. They're the football players, and those are the guys we look up to. So we need to be able to do the same thing. You know, it's not cool to just stand here in the hallway and, uh, hang out with friends and, and wait on the bell to ring and stuff like that and be late to class and not be prepared. We try to help our kids understand, well, you know, and this is the big thing. You want to be a college football player someday. Um, you know, you want to be a professional someday. You want to be successful at something later on in your life. Well, these are the things that successful people are doing in the workplace and, and on college campuses. People are on time. They got their books ready. They got the materials ready. And and they're about their business, you know. And, and so we try to preach that to our kids. So when they get into the school, into the, the general population of kids, um, you know, they're kind of a shining light on what needs to be happening at Godby High School. I always like to say, you know, we're an extension of the learning environment. We are the number one thing. We are the top dogs as far as the school goes. Everybody in that learning environment is important. And so our kids need to understand, although they play a huge role, they're just an extension of what their teachers are trying to do in the classroom and our administration and our community as a whole. They're an extension of what we want our community to do. Um, just, you know, before I move into, you know, the rest of that whole thing, talking about the mind part, um, you know, and it says on here, like, if you get a suspension, uh, it talks about the different, um, times that you have to sit out and things like that. The thing about it is, and, and I like to, you know, just compliment my staff on this. Uh, if there's a player that, that's, um, you know, not adhering to the rules of the school or a player that's, you know, constantly, uh, in some kind of situation. To be honest, how detailed our coaches are and the meetings that we have and things like that, they're going to have somebody else ready if, if a player isn't holding up their end of the bargain on the football field. I know sometimes people say that's easier said than done, um, but we are going to play the guy that's holding up the standard of the program. Um, we've had to do it before. Um, and, 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 and all this work's happening in. We've also, you know, I've also had it done different ways, um, where, you know, a player play and, and maybe they weren't supposed to. And, and I'll tell you somehow, you know, that it, it ends up working out how it's supposed to as far as, um, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't work, you know, it, you usually don't teach the player you know, what they need to learn from that situation. That that situation usually comes back up again. So any of my young coaches, I'm telling you, trust your instinct. Trust, you know, don't fall into that, um, you know, that trap of, you know, I got to play a guy because he's my star player and things like that. Um, you know, 
put put your standards down. Make sure you're prepared to um, uphold your standards, not just kind of throw you know stuff out there. Uh, because kids pick up on that and parents pick up on that and you don't want to be seen as the coach that kind of just let things fly and let anything go within your program. So you got to be willing, you know, if you come up with these standards and you say, hey, a guy has to do this if they miss this, or, you know, this is the standard, then, you know, you, you got to roll with that. One of the things that we'll be doing this summer um, and we didn't get around to this book in particular. We we talked a lot. Um, I, I went around to each one of the coaches and, and we let them kind of talk about, um, you know, their philosophy as a man and their philosophy, um, you know, as far as their life. Um, we did that last summer and each coach kind of uh, did their testimony and uh, talked about things within their life and, let the kids just kind of get a glimpse of the actual man that they are, not just the coach. Um, this summer we'll be doing kind of a book study, um, you know, and, and we'll get into that book with the players and just talk to them about, you know, effective leadership and different characteristics that we believe they should have to be successful in life, not just football. Um, because what I've learned over the years, um, and I got this from Coach Shakir when I when I was working with him, um, you know, developing great young men and, and getting kids to um, mature and, and 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 start to think about their futures and things like that. I'm telling you, that changes how they are on the field. That, that changes how they are with their um, teammates and, and also with their classmates and also with their teachers. Everything changes when they realize um, these are the things that I need to do in my everyday life to be successful, not just now, but in the future. Uh, so, you know, we try to do things like that. And we also, um, you know, have, have relationships with local, um, you know, churches and things like that. Uh, one of the churches, um, Pastor Todd from uh, Northwood Baptist Church here in Tallahassee, they actually feed our team before each home game uh, and does uh, kind of devotional time with them. And, and that's been invaluable for years. They've been doing that uh, before I even got to the school. Uh, and they've continued that. And that's that's been a huge part of, of our game day deal. And, and just within our program, you know, Pastor Tom is always there to kind of talk to guys about different things going on in life. And so um, we do a lot off the field to uh, work on um, that whole, you know, love for the program component and, and, and love for yourself too. All right. Um, <clears throat> talking about on the field, uh, and, and a lot of this, you know, it, it uh, you know, my my coordinators and uh, assistant coaches would be. Uh, probably better at uh, <laughs> going over all of this kind of stuff. I, I'll tell you right now, my, my biggest thing uh, on defense is, is teaching gap responsibility. Uh, being an offensive coach, um, you know, I, I think the number one thing in high school football and probably at every level of football is um, most defenses don't know how to keep gap responsibility. When you get your offense to understand that the defense's job is to fill every gap, um, and I think you do your offense a major uh, credit when when they understand that. So on defense, you know, I, I try to make sure our kids understand where they fit. When they learn gap responsibility, now we can teach them how to stay in those gaps and, and how to play things and how to play off of each other based off the fact that we've got to be responsible for each gap. Um, also within that uh, communication at the, the three levels, the big thing is the, the front end has to be communicating with the linebackers and the linebackers got to be communicating with the DBs and everybody's got to be on the same page. That's how you get to that uh, gap integrity on defense. Um, big part of that is, you know, I, I try to make sure our coaches 
you know, we meet and talk with each other. I, I never want, um, you know, the, the linebacker coaches to be speaking something different than the defensive line coaches and the DB coaches to not understand, um, you know, what the linebacker coaches are doing or teaching. So we go through and like right now it's been really good with all the Zoom meetings and stuff like that. We've just been kind of as a staff, um, we're going through our games from last year and really just breaking down each play and what should have happened if something had went wrong and, um, you know, what, what needs to happen uh, going forward and how we're going to use what we did previously to kind of go into what we're doing uh, this next coming season. All right. Um, the next uh, thing, just talking about our offense, my offensive philosophy, um, you know, I, I try to, uh, the whole adage about keep it simple, stupid. Um, <laughs> I try to make sure that, you know, if a team can't line up and, and just stay gap responsible and stop us from just running it down the throat or, um, and not even running it. Uh, or the team can't stop us from, um, you know, throwing the ball effectively, uh, can't run with our receivers and things like that. If there's some way that we can, you know, we have a, an advantage on the team, we're going to do that. We're, we're not going to go out and uh, just do things to do them. Um, we also try to make sure that we have an offensive philosophy that fits our players and what they can do. Um, now, we probably aren't going to go as drastic as to, you know, switching from a spread offense to going to a wing T. You know, we're not going to be that multiple, but we are going to be multiple in what, what, in what we do based on the uh, personnel that we have. You know, I always like for uh, my, my coordinators to be flexible enough that their offense can fit what we have uh, as far as a player, some years we may have, you know, more of a pocket passer at quarterback, and some years we may have more of an athlete, somebody that's best on the run or using their legs. And so we want to make the offense fit off of what they do. All right, uh, next thing I want to talk about uh, within, you know, our program is uh, college recruiting. Um, you know, I, I'm in, I'm heavily involved in the recruitment of our players. Um, you know, our defensive back coach and special teams coordinator, Coach Matt Jackson, um, he's kind of our recruiting uh, coordinator. Um, but me and him work hand in hand as far as meeting with coaches. And um, we do a thing in our program where um, we assign each uh, coach a conference so, you know, like my, um, you know, my linebacker coach will have the big 12. Um, and so he'll go through uh, find the recruiting coordinator for every school in the big 12. And he's going to send out um, our prospect sheets that have, you know, our players height and weight, um, their contact information, their huddle link, uh, their GPA and their test scores are all going to be on that recruiting sheet. And we have that for the class of, you know, 20, uh, 2021 all the way down to 2023. So, um, you know, the coaches will have every bit of information on our players that they could possibly have. Uh, so we split that up amongst the staff. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There's a lot of conferences. So most of my assistants have kind of the power five and, um, you know, those mid major conferences. Um, and then I actually go through it and, and have a couple conferences myself. Uh, just got done um, emailing all the coaches in the Big Sky Conference uh, recently. So, um, kind of what we do as far as college recruitment goes. So, uh, last thing with, with college recruitment um, is, you know, we want to make sure we're open and honest with parents. Uh, we try to sit down and 
I opened up policy with parents about recruiting and um and, and I'll tell you most parents feel like you know that their child can play for um you know University of Florida University of Texas and Ohio State um you know what parent doesn't they, they love their kid they they see them out there trying that football and most parents you know want them to possibly uh play on those big levels or just play some level of college football someday and one thing we try to help our parents understand there's a level of football for every kid for the most part. And then from that point, it goes to, you know, if you do have to pay something out of pocket, then we need to make sure we're doing things that are financially, um, you know, feasible for the family as far as, um, you know, continuing playing in college. So uh, we try to keep all communication open with parents so they understand throughout the whole process exactly what's happening, exactly what schools are interested, what we're doing on our end to uh, promote interest in that player. Uh, so that, you know, when signing day comes or when it's time for them to graduate, uh, the parent knows exactly what the plan is and, and, and what we're doing and, and what can be done um, to, to kind of help that player uh, possibly have that opportunity. Um, then in, in our booster club, uh, fundraising, uh, we, I meet, we meet once a month, uh, with our booster club, uh, I'm at every booster meeting, um, and I'll give them kind of a rundown of what we're doing within the program as far as on the field and, uh, initiatives that we kind of need to be focused on what we do. Um, our, our booster club president is, uh, Brittany Jones and, and her son is, uh, Deshaun Rucker who plays for us. Um, and so each um, booster club meeting will actually have themed meetings. So there'll be a theme for each uh, meeting. Like we'll have an academic night. Um, we'll have a night where we talk about um, strength training that we do. So we'll talk to parents about, you know, Coach Lewis will come in and talk to them about what we do within our program to get the kids stronger or, um, helping them with speed training and things like that. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll have like our ninth grade parent night where we talk to the new parents about you know, our, our program philosophy and, and things like that. So each booster club meeting, we don't just go in there and just kind of talk about random stuff. We, you know, there's going to be a theme and, and kind of structure to what we do uh, for that particular meeting. Uh, one of the big things too, if you're a new coach, um, we we um, we actually we feed our parents, so you know they're going, you know they're coming to the meeting. We're going to have a uh, you know a spread for them to uh, you know to so they won't have to cook dinner when they go home, and that's usually a a big draw for us as far as having parent involvement. Uh, that was one of the things when I first got the job uh, that. Uh, some some former coaches had explained to me that, you know, within our school, uh, we haven't always had a lot of activity within the booster program. You know, there's there's some years where we do, and there's some years where we, where we don't. So booster club involvement has uh, always been a big thing, and just having uh, consistency with uh, attendance in the booster club and and parents being involved is a big part of what we do. And so we're always trying to make sure uh, that, that we uh, promote parents being involved with the program. Hey guys, uh, I'd like to thank Coach uh, Bamstra uh, for having me on. Um, if you'd like to reach me, um, my email address is McCray, M-C-C-R-A-Y-B at Leon schools with an S at the end, net. Um, and then my social media for uh, Twitter and Instagram is Coach McCray APG.